a participation reward regardless which has a chance to give you what you are looking for that's huge devs that are listening to their community and making good decisions so far never have i ever time to step out of the tropical and get into my crusty crab uniform tico you're cooking right now what are we making <laughs> We have a new dev talk video. Tico, lay the news on me, buddy. Lord, help me, please, please be good news. What's up, gamers? Welcome to Tico Talks Throne in Liberty. My name's Tico, and I'm the globalization design manager at Amazon Games for Throne in Liberty. And I'm here to give you some updates on the game and a little peek at what's coming soon. I've been spending a ton of time in the game, having a blast with all of you. And now that we just released our Haunted Harvest Halloween update, I'm even more excited. I hope everyone has had a chance to check out the event. The limited time Haunted Labyrinth Dungeon is so fun, and I love seeing all the clever things people are doing with their outfits to get in the festive mood. It is pretty good. I'm not going to lie. The Halloween event in this game was pretty well done. Hopefully next year they don't rinse and recycle it. We can see some new things, but I did enjoy that there were actually some small little bits, an extra dungeon to do. I do enjoy that there's like little things you can do to prank one another and kind of like get in the, the mood. So I'd, I'd say it was fun. I, I honestly had a fun time with it so far, and I'm still actually enjoying it. It is repetitive now once all the rewards are done, but I am enjoying it. Let's talk a bit about how things have been going and what we're planning in the coming months. Okay. First, I want to give a huge thank you to the millions of players that have joined us so far on this journey. We wanted to make You're sure welcome. that crossplay was enabled from day one, and it's been awesome to see that investment pay off. This great community has grown so quickly in this first month, and we're just getting started. Of course, any game launch of this magnitude has lots of crazy. Just getting started, like to hear it. We've been in constant contact with NCSoft to address player feedback, and we hope you've seen some of that in the last few weeks. So let's talk more about how. So we're far, so good. Forward. Let's start with the top. So far, so good. I do really enjoy that they actually put out things in their social media that actually show that they're listening to some things and addressing some decent changes. Let's hope this holds up in this video. Pick we all hate and every MMO deals with bots. Yep. The battle against bots is right in the front. Front and center. Okay, let's talk. And I want to tell you a bit about what we're doing to attack bots on multiple fronts. First, we're continuing to improve our detection algorithms and are now running those daily to ban bots as quickly as possible. We're attacking the areas in which bots can operate and continuing to look for ways to make it difficult for bots to do business. Yep. But we want to do that while minimizing the impact to real player experience. We have some plans related to the auction house to impose protections to limit bots impact there. We will share more on that once we are able, but can't reveal too much detail that could be used to circumvent our safeguards. Can't tell them your secrets, but hope the secrets work. And hopefully those secrets that they're telling us about isn't just an empty promise behind it. So fingers crossed. Third, we're actively actioning players who engage in RMT behavior. Yep. Participating in RMT negatively impacts several aspects of the game, including empowering bot activity, compromising the hard work of players who follow the rules and more. We will continue to action players with more severe punishments as appropriate, including negative loosen balances, full auction house lockouts, suspensions, and bans. As we yeah, negative loosen meaning that they actually have to pay the money for that loosen so the company doesn't lose that loosen that you paid for. And I'm pretty sure what they do is they lock you out of all the marketplace and vendor activities and like basically force you to pay that loosen back so you can continue to play the game from there. Your account essentially kind of gets like imprisoned in its own way. We have zero tolerance for this type of behavior. Hell yeah. The next thing I want to talk to you about is world bosses, which are garnering a lot of discussion in the community. So I want to take some time to discuss that. First, let's talk about loot drops. Many of you have been feeling that world bosses have often left you feeling disappointed because you don't feel there's a meaningful chance to acquire gear during these events. Mm -hmm. To improve this, we're going to do two things. First, we're going to increase the number of portals that appear for peace mode bosses. The portals will be generated based on player counts, but on average, I would expect you to see at least one more portal per boss. Okay. This should help spread players out across more fights, giving more opportunities to acquire drops. Nice. It's kind of needed in some of the servers too. Some of them are really, really crowded right now. There's a lot of people still going in and kind of narrows those, those super rare drops for the people abroad. So I think that's a really healthy change. So far, I'm liking this. We're like 30% into this and I'm really enjoying Second what I'm hearing. Thing is we're introducing a new chest drop that has a chance to be included in your participation reward after the boss dies. Okay. This chest will allow you to select one of any of the epic items the boss can drop, which we hope will also give players the agency of choosing a reward that's most relevant. A to participation them. reward regardless, which has a chance to give you what you are looking for. That's huge. That is huge for solo players. What? That is actually such a good change for those types of people and people who are struggling and getting zerged over. That is an actual, like, applaudable 
change. Super happy hearing that. Okay. Devs that are listening to their community and making good decisions so far? Never have I ever. Time to step out of the tropical and get into my Krusty Krab uniform. Tico, you're cooking right now. What are we making? I like where this is going. Tico's holding the secret formula right now. Go on. All items from this chest will be untradeable, though the non-weapon items can be lithographed if the player chooses. Okay. Players can expect both of these changes to be live following our maintenance on October 31st. That right away? What? Change is happening? And they're happening right away? Tico, keep cooking, my man. I like what I'm hearing. We've also been paying attention to the impact that the Eclipse skill is having on peace mode bosses occurring okay. within Abyss Dungeons. Okay. We think that this is disrupting the expected flow of gameplay okay. for individuals attempting to participate in peace mode bosses. To be fair, that's fair. You know, peaceful should be peaceful. I think I know where he's going with this. Which are meant to be a PvP free experience for those players. Yeah. So we're making an adjustment so that when peace mode bosses spawn in dungeons, there will be an additional new portal outside the dungeon that will take players directly to the safe zone inside the dungeon. This way they can enter the peace mode boss as expected without passing through areas that may have turned into a conflict zone due to the eclipse skill. Honestly, that's actually a huge W for the player base. Like, yes, there are places you can go to and yes, you can make it nighttime if you have control of nighttime. We have definitely, I didn't make the call, but we've definitely swatched, swapped it to nighttime and we have fought people out of it because that's just a mechanic in the game. However, a peaceful boss, if it's meant to be peaceful, should be peaceful. I think this is honestly a very big W change. This change is expected to go live in mid-November. Mid-November, you got y'all are fucked until November. <laughs> Did I say W? I meant get rolled. <laughs> Oh, that's actually great, though. The Eclipse skill itself will continue to change the dungeon into conflict mode, as always. Awesome. Finally, everyone bosses, wins. There's been talk about how contribution works in relation to the loot drops. Later this week, we will be releasing an article that defines and describes how loot distribution works across all content types. Good. That's this. We need that. That is awesome. We literally Tico. I swear, get, mis get Mr. Krabs out of here. Get Mr. Tico in here. But I want to briefly touch on this specifically for Conflict World bosses. Mm -hmm. With the recent change locking- Tico, don't go backwards here. Tico, we can do this. Boss loot to the original owner for 10 minutes. Some guilds have been wondering what the value of PvP is in these events. Okay. The spirit of the Conflict World boss is that guilds are fighting to control the area to allow their guild to damage the boss and raise their contribution, thus increasing their chances to get better loot. Yep. In addition to increasing your own contribution though, you can also decrease other guilds' contribution. In conflict mode, you do this by killing players from rival guilds, yep. which will reduce that player's contribution by 70% each death. So reducing another guild's contribution increases your relative contribution. So it's a major factor in determining the loot that can drop for you. We are Tico explaining mechanics? Did he bust out the dad belt too? Mr. Papa Tico. Working on introducing some contextual UI indicators of contribution amounts, and we hope that this will help guilds be more strategic about which opponents to focus their attacks on. Moving on from world bosses, I want to talk about co-op dungeons. Okay. We have made three recent changes to matchmaking for dungeons. Mm -hmm. To help with queue experiences, mm -hmm. we introduced a new option to queue for a random dungeon mm -hmm. when using party matchmaking, and we made a change to better match players based on their combat power to better align group capabilities. Okay. To help with completion rates, we increased the damage and HP buff when queuing through matchmaking to be 10% up from 5%. Yep. All of these changes went live on October 17th. Yep. Then, in order to improve the rate in which players can acquire their desired gear, go on, made another change following the Haunted Harvest Halloween update that provides a bonus reward when queuing for random dungeons. Yes. Each successful random dungeon completion will reward one additional dimensional soul shard mm -hmm. and will also have a chance at a larger reward of one dimensional essence. We hope that these changes have had a meaningful impact to your experience with co-op dungeons. I think they're all right, honestly. As playing a healer role, I enjoy being able to somewhat carry people through. If I get a good tank in my group, we can literally carry three DPSs through it. And a lot of the times you can inspect people's gear and see what they're using weapon style. So sometimes we'll let in the blues with like no traits because we're just trying to get them through. I think it's healthy because you have those situations where new players are really benefiting from it. I think it's really, I think this is, an awesome change that allows the min-max decision to be this rolling, and it allows newer players to be able to get involved and potentially caught up in the right groups. But 
everyone struggles with mechanics, so that's that's all, that's just always going to be its own thing. Watch Tico come out of left field and be like, and, and while you're running these these dungeons, we just decide to remove all mechanics. Uh, and you know what? Honestly, there's a free guaranteed boss weapon in the chest every single time you do this. So there you go, guys. We're going to keep listening to player feedback and we'll continue to tweak if needed. Love it. All right, let's talk now about some major systems that players... The fact that they're coming out with dev talks this quickly with changes this quickly while responding to things this quickly is really, really awesome to see early on. I hope this continues and it's been nothing but healthy changes that I feel like still benefit the new players, casual players and PVP players still get to still do their normal PVP things. I mean, on top of the PVP changes they're making with nighttime, I mean, they also expanded combat areas in some of the bosses as well, which I think was a super healthy change. As may already be familiar with because of their time playing on the Korean service. Mm -hmm. In particular, I want to talk about two systems. Okay. Substance transformation and the rune system. And I want to be very- Is the two new systems coming up, I believe? Clear here. Neither of these systems will launch in our service with their current functionality. We're working closely with okay. NCSoft to make updates. Okay. And both systems will be improved in a way that will satisfy both Korean and global users. Okay. So Korea is going to be the lab rat for this new change. And then we get it after once it's finally golden and good to go. Is that what I just heard? Good. Awesome. I'm with you, Tico. Let's go. Here are some things I can say for now. For the rune system, it will have at a minimum the following adjustments. Okay. First, rune slot unlocking will no longer require RNG to obtain your desired slot type. Oh. Second, we're introducing a separate rune bag with improved searching capabilities to reduce the burden on your traditional inventory and storage, while also making it easier to find your desired runes. Okay. For substance transformation, it will at a minimum be changed so that tradable items cannot be used in the system. This means you cannot infinitely buy items from the auction house to feed the system to earn rewards. Okay. Since the amount of items that can be fed may be decreased because of this, we're evaluating the requirements of how much has to be fed into the system to gain rewards. Although we don't have- Make them work. Make them work like dogs, Mr. Papatico. Make them sweat like dogs. This system is not planned to release in the near future. Oh. And we're still actively discussing any potential adjustments for this system with NCSoft prior to its release. So dogs soon. I want to talk about a growing desire from our players to have the ability to engage in more structured PvP outside of the competitive large-scale options yes. currently available in the open world events. Yes. Oh my god. Tico, tell us what we've been asking for. Go follow my Twitter account. This has gone from a tool to a weapon. The option's yours, Tico. And we're excited to bring you a new feature that will come in mid-November that will provide on-demand battle feature. I don't want to reveal too much yet, but this will allow players to engage in non-competitive PvP across arenas and conquest battles with varying numbers of teams and team sizes. I swear to God, if you make it useless for healers, Tico, anyone from the Amazon team, if you ever listen to this Dominion event as a healer is a joke. I don't know the solution for it, but I really would love to select a color from a member whose team I am on and be able to heal them. The party matchmaking system for Dominion event is terrible as a support role. If you have ever watched me play Dominion, as a healer, I can't do anything to support people unless I'm in pre-made parties and the RNG of the people that I'm with actually work with me. It is horrible. I really hope systems like that improve alongside stuff like this. Because this is super cool as heck to hear. So I'll sheath my weapon for now and go back to the patties and I'll wait for mid-November. There's been so much great feedback from everyone in the community, both positive comments and suggestions for how to improve the game. Yeah, here's a suggestion. Shout out to all the guild masters that want to get that across. Here's a suggestion. Members list, search bar. Selection upon grade, recent reputation, last login, alphabetical. Give me an alphabetical option. Give me a search bar. Gear distribution, when distributing this to a member, give me a search bar. Rather than this random list of who participated and who didn't, that also is not in alphabetical order. Search bar, please, I beg of you. Also, more officer roles or officer advisor roles, please, I beg of you. But at the very least, please search bar. Build management and this list management stuff is really tough in this game because of how inefficient it feels. Search bar, if not for the members, please for gear distribution. It's so bad. Thank you for listening to my Tico talk. You may finish yours. Thank you. You're We're welcome. really grateful that you are all this invested in helping us continue to improve the game. I'm very grateful for my search bar, Tico. Thank you so much for giving us our search bars you are you are the best we're just getting started and this week on October on that search bar get started on that search bar that would be super cool over 31st our first player survey will open you will be able to access it from the silesium notice board in game 
and I want to really encourage you to take it. We take yep. the results very seriously and real actions have spawned from all of our previous surveys. I have to say, honestly, we've seen that from them based on the communication from the community. Definitely changes we see that would make the player base so far feel heard. We're always listening to your feedback, whether it's- You better be. Give me my search bar, Tico. Reading your reviews on the major gaming platforms. Watching our reaction videos so you can give us our search bars. Or comments in Discord and social media. Yeah, that too. So please keep the feedback coming. All right, that brings us to the community question. What we'd really like to know is... What when can we get those search bars? Leave your thoughts down below. Thoughts down below. Here you go. Search bars. Comment. I know what's coming in the next update.